Hello and welcome to Pirate News. I'm Sean Keegan. And I'm Emily Fiesel. On today's broadcast, we will be covering the most important news from around campus and across the country. We will also bring you the Seton Hall Sports Update and your five-day weather forecast. It's that time of year again. The South Orange Maplewood Film Festival is back and looking for submissions. Every year, Maplewood's Woodland hosts five days of the event featuring work from aspiring and established filmmakers alike. The 5th Annual Soma Film Festival takes place March 18th through 22nd. To submit your film, send a link to your updated work to scriptteach at gmail.com and email Professor Pace at william.pace at shoe.edu with questions. Submissions are due January 31st. Due to the success of last semester's peacemaking conference, Seton Hall is planning another half-day workshop on nonviolent communication. The program is called The Power of Nonviolence, Transformative Communication Skills for Diplomacy Leaders. It will be led by Eli McCarthy, Professor of Justice and Peace Studies at Georgetown University. The techniques in the program are used by, worldwide by diplomats, unarmed protection units, social activists, and many more. If interested, the event will be held from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the University Center's Faculty Lounge. Dr. Cecilia Marzabati will receive the Emma G. Quartaro Woman of the Year Award for 2020. The award is named for the late Dr. Quartaro and honors the accomplished women on Seton Hall's campus. Aside from being an accomplished organic chemistry professor, Marzabati, author of Mom, the Chemistry Professor, also works tirelessly to support women in STEM. Dr. Marzabati receives her award at the Conference on Women and Gender on March 13th. For more details, contact Mary Balkin at mary.balkin at shoe.edu. Seton Hall alum Marcus Hicks was just appointed the commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Corrections. Hicks graduated Seton Hall Law in 2003 and began working in the department in 2007. Within the department, he has served as the chief of staff and director of programs and community services. In this cabinet position, Hicks is responsible for a $1 billion budget, 8,000 employees, and 12 correctional facilities, county jails, and halfway houses. Hicks was recently confirmed by the Senate and will be sworn in today, January 30th. And now we'll head over to Jalen Smith with your Seton Hall Sports Update. Jalen? Thanks, Emily, and hello, Pirate Sports fans. I'm Jalen Smith, and this is your Seton Hall Sports Update. Unfortunately, this past weekend, the Pirates swimming team fell to La Salle, the La Salle Explorers, 198.5 to 99.5. Helping to lead the Pirates was freshman Ross, pa Ross Pantano, who took first place in the 200-meter backstroke with a time of 1 minute and 51 seconds. Also out in front was sophomore Ben LaClaire, who led in the 500 meter freestyle with a time of four minutes and 42 seconds. Moving over to the women's side of swimming, they too came up short against La Salle, 178 to 122, being their final non-conference matchup. Freshman Sierra Cripps won first in the 100 meter and 200 meter butterfly, 57 seconds for the 100 meter and two minutes and five seconds for the 200 meter. Same goes for Marianne Malloy as she took the top spot for the 100 meter backstroke at 58 seconds. Though they came short in this match, the Pirates will return to take on their Big East rivals, Georgetown and Providence, from January 31st to February 1st in the Berkeley Aquatics tri -Meet. Lastly, hope you are in the softball spirit because this past weekend, the 2020 softball schedule was announced. Head coach Paige Smith announced 14 home games and 22 games on the road. Their season will begin on February 8th against Longwood University, as for the home games, the first one will be held on March 10th against in-state rival Rutgers. And that's a wrap for your Seton Hall Sports Update. Once again, I'm Jalen Smith. Now back to Sean and Emily with the news from the tri-state area. Thanks, Jalen. Rutgers University recently named Jonathan Holloway as its 21st president. Holloway will also be the university's first black president. He was approved by the Board of Governors on January 21st. Holloway served as a provost at Northwestern University since 2017, as well as a professor of history and African American studies. Previously, he was also a dean at Yale University. He will begin serving Rutgers in full this summer, officially starting on July 1, 2020. A man being held by Customs and Border Protection at Newark Liberty International Airport made headlines Tuesday morning when he escaped from custody while in the bathroom. After being taken to the restroom, authorities say the inmate simply disappeared. He was believed to have been hiding in the ceilings. Level 1 of Terminal C was shut down briefly to outside traffic, but Port Authority police later arrested the man without incident. After being notified of the escape around 11.30 a.m., the terminal was reopened by 12.36 p.m. Now we'll head over to Dana Bell with your five-day weather forecast. Dana? 
Thanks, Sean. Hi, Pirates. I'm Dana Bell, and I'm here to give you your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. The cold winter weather isn't over yet, giving us partly cloudy skies along with a high of 36 degrees and a low of 27 today. Friday won't be too different with another day of partly cloudy skies paired with a high of 44 and a low of 32. Saturday gives us another high of 44 and a low of 33 with scattered rain showers throughout the day. On Sunday, we'll see a high of 46 and a low of 34 with more partly cloudy skies. And Monday will be the comparatively warmest day with a high of 55 and a low of 41 and partly cloudy skies. So that's it for your five-day weather forecast. Stay warm, Pirates. I'm Dana Bell. Now back to Sean and Emily with the latest news from around the country. Thanks, Dana. According to the U.S. News and World Report, officials claim 110 people in 26 states are being investigated for coronavirus. The number of confirmed cases still remains at five, though the Center for Disease Control predicts more cases will emerge. 32 of the cases have tested negative. The CDC is working on getting testing kits more readily available, but in the meantime, they recommend avoiding non-essential travel to Hubei, China. They also advise not to panic, as they have currently assessed it as a low health, health risk in the United States. A Georgetown University study released this month reports liberal arts colleges are the most profitable type of college available. The study examined graduates' profits after paying off student loans to find the return on investment. They found liberal arts graduates had an average return on investment of over $900,000 40 years after graduation, almost $200,000 more than their peers from other types of colleges. Also among their findings, higher graduation rates yield higher return on investments, while higher percentages of students receiving Pell Grants led to lower student profits. This concludes our broadcast of Pirate News. Once again, I'm Sean Keegan. And I'm Emily Fiesel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.